It's the beginning of winter here in San Diego, California, and today I'm going to show you a beautiful native plant with edible red fruits and how to make it into a delicious fermented beverage. Toyam produces fruit in late fall and winter and was an important food for the native peoples that used to live here. The fruit is rather dry and slightly acidic, but makes an excellent trail snack. Harvesting the fruit is fun, but be sure to only take a little from each bush so that you leave plenty for the wildlife and other foragers. Welcome to my kitchen. Well, I've brought the Toyan fruits back, and what I've simply done is remove the stems and rinse them with water. So they're ready to go now. Also, I have here a mortar and pestle, which I'm going to use to mash the fruits into a pulp. I have three mason jars, three clean mason jars, and I'm doing three because I'm going to do three variations of this. The first one is just going to be water with the mashed fruit, the second is going to be water with the fruit and honey, and the third one's going to be water with the fruit, honey, and yeast. The lids I'm going to remove, and they're going to be replaced, the top is going to be covered with a breathable material, uh, such as this, and then tied down with a rubber band. I also have here three pieces of black aluminum foil. This foil is going to be used to individually wrap each jar for during the fermentation process because I want to keep the light out because light can negatively affect fermentation. Um, another option is to just put the jars into a dark place like a cupboard or pantry. That also works. And the ideal temperature for this fermentation process is about 70 degrees. I um, also have here honey and measuring spoons stirring spoon and a little bit of yeast. So what I'm going to do is take three even measurements and then just mash it down and then once they're mashed sufficiently I will place these into the first jar. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same with all three jars. An interesting fact about Toyam is that it was very abundant in the Los Angeles area in the early days of Los Angeles before Hollywood existed. And um, it was actually common for people to collect it for Christmas time for decorating. Um, it's also known as California Holly, and California Holly is what eventually led to the name Hollywood being given to that city, which is so famous for the motion picture industry. I'm going to put this in the second jar. Now it's not necessary to completely mash them up, and, but you want to. I just want to break them open uh, so that there's, so that the water can get in there, and, and the fermentation and the flavor will be more full that way. This jar could use a little bit more. Okay, and then for the last jar, if you don't have a mortar and pestle. What you can do is just put the fruits into the jar or into a bowl, mash them with a stone or even a fork, a spoon, big wooden spoon, um, anything. You just want to break them up. Mortar and pestle is really nice because it's, this one's made out of stone, so it, uh, it's really easy to mash things up in it. I'm going to make sure that there's a equal amounts of fruit in each jar. a little bit more. Next step, add water. I want to make sure I fill them up to about the top. 
about an inch below the top. There. Okay, so this one is now ready. It is just going to be water with the fruit. In this one here, I'm going to add honey. I'm going to put two tablespoons of this honey in here. And then add honey to the third jar. Again, only two jars are getting honey. And the third one is also going to get yeast. That's good. I have a small amount of yeast that I'm going to put in the third jar. I think it's about an eighth of an ounce. Now I'm just going to stir all of these together, help the honey to dissolve, mix in well the yeast. A few times a day I'm going to stir these. What will happen during the fermentation process is as uh, you can see that uh, much of the fruit actually floats to the surface and that which comes in contact with the air, it will eventually grow mold unless I keep stirring it. If I keep stirring it, it will keep it as acidic and uh, will help prevent mold from growing, which can cause a, a bad taste. Okay. Now I'm going to cover these up. Wrap each one. The first time I did this, I did this with water, fruit, and honey. And it came out wonderful. It produced a flavor very similar to a nice wine. Um, I liked it. And so I'm going to, what I'm going to do now, again, every day I'm going to stir. I'm going to open the lid and stir a few times each day. And then after five days, is when I'm going to do the taste test. Welcome back. Today is day eight of the fermentation of the Toyon. I know I was going to do this for five days, but I got busy on day five, six, and seven, so I'm just now getting to it on day eight. They've been kept in the dark all this time, and I've stirred them about twice every day. So now I'm really anxious to see how they're going to taste. Now I have three variations here. This one is Toyon with water, this is Toyon with water and honey, and this is Toyon with water, honey, and yeast. And I did the three variations just to see if there's a difference in the flavor when it's finished. So let's get into it. Wow, look at that color. Really beautiful, kind of an auburn color. This is the Toy on with water and honey. Color looks exactly the same to me. And the toy on with water, honey, and yeast it also looks exactly the same. Okay, which one should I start with? I'm going to start with the water and toy on. Okay. And then I'm going to pour some into here into this glass through the strainer. Spilled a little, that's okay. Okay. Toyon and water fermented for eight days. Hmm, it was a very mild scent. It's pleasant, and I'm not really sure what it smells like. I can't say it smells really like Toyon. Maybe it smells like Toyon. Toyon doesn't really have much of a, of a scent, but this could be more concentrated due to the fermentation process. It could be stronger, is what I mean. Okay. 
definitely some alcohol in that. It's not strong, but it's, it's a, it has a mild alcohol flavor to it. I really don't know what to compare it to. It's, um, wow, it's not bad. It's, it, it, I mean, it's actually good. Mm. Interesting. You know, it has, the Toyon berries are just slightly acidic in flavor and this, the fermentation seems to increase the flavor. This is good. I, I, I like this. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the next one. Toyon with water and honey. It really smells, I can smell the honey a little bit, the mead flavor, just a little bit. Yes, it's different. It's sweeter. It's sweeter because of the honey. And I don't taste the alcohol flavor as much. And it lacks the acidity that uh, the first one has, um, and at, it also lacks the Toyon flavor. It's almost as if it was just pure honey and water. I have to say, between the two, I like the just uh, I like the first one with Toyon and water. Okay. Now the third one, Toyon water, honey, and yeast. I'm just making a big mess here. That's all right. I need a funnel. Okay. <sighs> Upon first sniff, it is very similar or even smells identical to the second one, the one with honey. Hmm. This is smoother. There's something different about it which I I can't really describe. It is very similar to number two here with the honey, but it has a smoother taste to it. Hmm. Well, this is a really interesting. Of the three, I like the first one best with just the water and toyon fruit. It, it just, it, it's, um, it seems, it tastes lighter. Um, the alcohol is more distinct. This, uh, this just tastes heavier. It tastes, it tastes too sweet. That's really the difference. And that's obviously because I had honey in both of these. Um, so for my personal preference, I prefer it without the honey. And um, I would definitely make more of this without the honey. Very interesting. Hmm. Ah. This is, this was a really good experiment. I've never heard of anyone fermenting Toyon fruits. Um, so I, I really wanted to try it. And um, I'm very pleased with the results. Um, again, I will definitely do water and Toyon again in the future. Thank you for joining me on this little tasty adventure and uh, I look forward to sharing many more in the future. Take care.